Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. If you have been following my video series on my main channel, or if you just stumbled across this, you really don't know what's going on. But in my 2003 Jeep TJ, I recently did an LS Vortex swap, 4L60E transmission, and the transmission cooler line is plumbed through my superior radiator. Now one of the things that I was told when I purchased the rebuilt transmission is you do not run it through your radiator cooler because it'll burn it up and of course i'm the type of person i like to understand why why do people say that are they just saying that or is it just because but however in short trips i have been driving it it does get up to pretty close to the overheat temperature it does hasn't overheated yet but if i would continue to operate it at close to 210 degrees fahrenheit there's a very good possibility I could have blown my transmission in a very short period of time. So that's why I'm going to install a transmission cooler. So a long time ago when I had the 4.0 engine and supercharger, I had installed a transmission temperature gauge because I was doing a trip to the Yukon and with all the mountains and stuff, I really want to know how hot the transmission was going because the last thing you want is to be in the Yukon in Alaska and blow your transmission because you'd be stranded there. So I took all these extra precautions to make sure that that did not happen. So now this is where it gets debatable. In my short trips, I have not verified the transmission temperature via a scanner versus my gauge. But in my last transmission temperature install, I had put it into the oil pan, but on this one here, I put it into the transmission going outline and I built this little little module that the temperature sender goes in. So it goes from the transmission through the sender, then into the radiator. So ultimately, in my case with an aftermarket gauge, where you have your transmission temperature sender will greatly vary on your readings and how to interpret them. For example, the first time I did it, I installed it into the oil pan. Now that is going to tell me the temperature of the oil in the pan and not necessarily the temperature of the actual transmission. Because the hottest it's going to be is when it comes out of the torque converter going up to the radiator where I have it mounted now. And of course, some people like to mount it after the radiator. So once it goes through, they want to see the temperatures of the oil when it's cooled heading back to the transmission. So it ultimately depends where you want it set. I want to see it as it's in its hot region. And I didn't like the temperatures I was seeing. And like I said, I bought a transmission cooler that I'm going to install, but this Hayden transmission cooler I bought has a nice little chart that explains what happens at the different temperatures. So let's have a look at that. So this is the transmission cooler I bought that I'm going to install in the next video. However, ultimately, if your transmission ran 175 degrees to 79, you'll get 100,000 easy if you don't abuse it. 195, 91, you're looking at 50,000. 220, 104 is 20,000 kilometers. I was running in the transmission line coming out transmission 210. So like I said, it wouldn't take long. And I hadn't even been out wheeling. If I would have went out wheeling, those temperatures would have spiked. So 240 degrees varnish forms, 10,000 kilometers. That'd be pretty expensive tranny. 260, seals harden. 295, plate slip. 315 degrees, guaranteed your toast at that stage. Seals and clutches burn out, carbons form maybe 500 miles. And honestly, transmission coolers are not expensive. You can pick them up at your local automotive store online. I purchased this one from Amazon in Canada. So I think I paid like $75 for it. And if I can drop my temperature, I wanna see my temperature go under 200. I'd like to see it around 150 ish maybe like 170 when it's really working, but that's to be determined. I'll have a look at that in the next video. So if you come to this video and you want to understand why you should install 
a transmission cooler, especially if you're gonna be doing any towing. If you live in an area where there's a lot of hills, a lot of mountains, and you're really working it, your transmission is basically one of the hearts of your vehicle. If your transmission goes, you're done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this short video. And in the next video, I'm going to be installing this transmission cooler. I'm going to be comparing temps to what I was reading before, to what I'm reading now. And then you guys can see a difference. So if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, click the button. Otherwise, I may or may not see you in the next video. Talk to you later.